what is going on guys welcome back to ranger central and today i'm starting what i guess you could call a little bit of a mini series where i'm gonna just honestly instead of doing like you know five guys they should target in free agency five players they should target through trade stuff like that like i've done in previous off seasons and deadlines i figured you know what why don't i just do individual videos for certain guys i think the rangers should target because one there's a lot of guys that I think they should target considering the fact that I think this season uh, this off season I should say above all they really need to focus on making some changes and on top of that I figured you know what I could go more in depth with these players so why not do all that before we jump into everything all I ask is that you leave a like on the video if you do enjoy it subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're Ranger fans and turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live just because it's the off season doesn't mean we stop the grind here on Ranger Central and if if anything I should say I'm going to go more balls to the wall this offseason than I have in previous ones. One, because I think there's a lot of things I still want to cover with this team, even though, you know, you might think it's psychotic considering the fact that I've been aggravated with the fact that there's, you know, really not been a lot of accountability and stuff like that with this team. But regardless, you know, I there's just a lot on my mind with this with Target stuff like that. And on top of that, I don't want to slack like I've done in previous offseasons. And if you want to be a member, now is the time because I could really put my focus on the membership program. So shout out to everyone that is a member. If you are one, give me ideas for content you want to see in terms of that. But now that I'm done wasting your time, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, this is with the Seattle Kraken. And I was, you know, cooking up armchair GMs thinking, what could the Rangers do? And I think we're all in agreement that the Rangers need to, at the very least, improve on defense and in the bottom six, most of all. And, you know, we could debate if they need to make changes to the core, the top six, stuff like that. If we're being realistic, it's probably not going to happen. And this is coming from someone that would be very happy to be wrong about that because I do think the core does need changes. But I do think more realistically is asking for a couple changes on defense and asking for changes in the bottom six most and foremost and let's talk about the trade let's not even waste any more time let's just jump into it so the trade that i have with the seattle kraken is the new york rangers trade ryan lingren and capo caco and a third round pick for jamie alexiak yanni gord and a fourth round pick and i'm going to explain my reasoning of course for why this makes sense for each team for the seattle side of things they need a lot of youth in that lineup. Uh, they do have a lot of guys that are on the older side, and they're really not a cup competitive team. And you figure, all right, give them Ryan Lindgren's rights, and they could sign him to the contract they want to. He's younger than Alexiak, and he's proven that he could play first pair minutes for a hockey team if you need him to. It's not necessarily the ideal spot to put him in, especially because a guy like Vince Dunn would be eating a chunk of the minutes there. But I do think Ryan Lindgren could be a fit there because of the fact that, again, his age first and foremost. And on top of that, you get a guy that could play second pair D and they could give him the contract since they have a lot of cap space. They could give him the contract that they want to. And then you go to Capo Caco. That's more of an experiment type thing where let's take a flyer on a guy that right now doesn't have a lot of value right now. But we figure, all right, you know what? We turn around Tolvanen's career. Maybe we could have the same magic with Kako if we give him the minutes and give him the time of day. And maybe Kako for himself gets a confidence boost, having a change of scenery, getting into the top six. And then the third round pick, I'll explain why I threw in a third round pick. We get to the Ranger side things. Jamie Alexiak, which we're going to break down each player a little bit more as I go throughout the video. But just to quickly give a breakdown... The reason why I am a fan of Alexiak is one, the guy's under contract already, and it's not a bad one. He has two years left at that 4.5 cap hit that you see on the screen, and I think that he would be a very solid fit. I don't love him on the top pair playing next to Adam Fox. I don't hate the idea of trying him there, but I think that he could give you serviceable minutes on the top pair if you need him to, but ideally you want him probably to play second pair, third pair minutes. I think he would do a good job there. Well, talk about why i feel that way but a lot of it is the fact that or the reason why i should say that i think they should replace him with ryan lingra and people might say why would you want a guy like alexiak who's older one i do think that he has a little bit better foot speed than ryan lingra despite him being bigger than ryan lingra and on top of that the biggest thing which we're going to go into the models of all of that store uh all that sort of stuff is uh he's really good with moving the puck and breaking the puck out and the biggest thing is I think he fits Peter Laviolette's system, which we'll talk about. And then when you get to Yanni Gord, this team 
how much are we talking about that they need to add a little bit more grit and scoring as well in the bottom six because let's be honest here it is absolutely ridiculous that this team had to rely on a 21 year old kid and matt rempe to you know bring grit and make it contagious throughout the lineup a guy like yanni gord's not going to take any liberties and he's going to be a pest for this lineup if they added him and the good news is one year left on that deal that might get you an opportunity to have Seattle retain half his salary there, which I did, of course, in the trade. That's part of why the third round pick is moved. But I have it with a little bit of a pick swap being a fourth round pick goes the other way to the Rangers. Now we move on to the trade comparable. And I couldn't really find one that honestly suits it. Like, as you can see, I tried with some of these sort of deals. You could maybe say something like the Rossovic, ironically, line a uh, trade with Dubois, a third or, you know, maybe this is another trade that you could argue as a comparable. Granted, I don't know how big of a comparison it is because Arizona pretty much got no quality players. They mostly wanted pick uh, quality and quantity versus that. And then they got out of OEL's contract and, you know, gave up the rights to go. And I could go on and on. But the trade that I found that was the closest comparable out of, out of them all, and it's really still not that big of a comparison, is the Nazem Kadri trade to the Colorado Avalanche, which it would have been more of a fit, if you want to say, with Phil Peedle in this sort of deal. But the reason why is, you know, Kadri's kind of more of the lingering side, obviously, defensively. Kind of you could flip around the roles here, you know, Kerfoot being Kako situation, Barry kind of being the lingering spot. It's just more of the draft pick status that flip around. And then the Rangers, of course, get more of a proven defenseman, a proven forward. So you could argue maybe the Rangers have to give up more value in this type of deal. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I don't know, because I do think that a lot of it will have to do with the fact that Ryan Lingren is going to get a lot more money, which is why I kind of have that value evening out. A little bit more there but i again i could see the argument that the rangers have to give a little bit more but we get into since there really wasn't any big trade comparable and that was the closest i could find we get to you know some of the things with ryan lindgren where you look at the difference between him and alexiak this is the all three zones model great work that uh corey does with that you could see his name there all the plugging uh there of course because i don't want to you know seem like i'm taking advantage here and if you know he asked me to take this down i will uh, for all I care. But, you know, Lingren, you look at the chart from this year, and I know people that are not big fans of charts are going to hate this, but, you know, there it does speak volumes because there is a lot of it that does translate to the eye test a good amount. There are some things that I disagree with, but I do definitely agree that zone entry defense was an issue with a guy like Ryan Lingren. And that's a problem considering the fact that this team, you know, really tried to thrive off the 1-3-1 throughout the year and then we go to a guy like Jamie Alexiak and you could see it's a lot better the zone entry defense and then you look at his you look at just the zone exits and two and puck retrievals he is a lot better at retrieving the puck he's a lot better at moving the puck out of the zone despite again the fact that he's I think six foot seven like 250 or something like that He's actually surprisingly good at uh, moving the puck. I don't know if that has to do with good foot speed or a like decent foot speed. Obviously, he's, he's not going to have the best foot speed. I don't know if it has to do with that or something else, but I do, like, I'm just surprised by something like this. And I don't think it was a fluke. I mean, if you look at last year's numbers, I, very similar uh, in that regard and that department. And it's a guy that I think would fit Laviolette's system because of the fact that, again, those zone entry. Uh, the zone entries that he prevents is big. And then you look at some of the other models, like you want to look at a guy, uh, look at like the evolving hockey model, look at the ramp charts there, look at the player cards here. You know, he's a guy that could kill penalties for you. Very serviceable. And then if you want to look at like base numbers, like points and plus minus stuff like that, the minus two and stuff like that, it might really rub people the wrong way and throw people off. But you have to remember that Dallas wasn't really the best team through a good amount of those years. Look at him in Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah, well, when he was there at Pittsburgh, pretty good uh, plus minus there if you want to take that into consideration. Seattle, good last year, good plus minus. Here's a minus two, which isn't even bad for how atrocious Seattle kind of was low key. An issue here might be penalty minutes. That, that definitely might be an issue. He does take a good amount of penalties, which, you know, Ryan Lindgren... Does take a decent amount, but definitely not to the degree of Alexiak if you do want to get a knock on it. And the other big knock I have with Alexiak in general is the contract itself because I'm not a fan of 4.6. I'd love if they could find a way to get Seattle to retain even just a million of that. I'd feel a lot better him at 3.6. Uh, but, you know, you look at the points, 15 points last year, 25 the year before, 17, 14. 
consistently going to give you like Ryan Lindgren production from the back end pretty much. The only difference is the guy is better at moving the puck, and I do think he plays a bit more physical than Ryan Lindgren. And then Yanni Gord, I don't think I even need to introduce you guys really to. You guys know him from winning cups with Tampa Bay. You look at his charts from this year, uh, a very impactful piece. His expected numbers did it. Like He could have had more points than he did this year, and I'm pretty sure he was still productive. And he's also good defensively as well. I mean, look at his percentiles for defense. That was last year, but you look at this year and it's still very respectable. I mean, 89 offense took a dip, but a lot of that is because of the fact that it looks like he did get a little unlucky, which would make sense because Seattle wasn't necessarily, again, the best team. And the big thing with Gord also is the fact that you don't have to play him in the bottom six if you want to. Like, if you really want to, I do think you could play him in the top six, it's not the ideal spot, but if you really wanted to, he's a guy that has played with good players before. As you can see, has put up very good points with good players like Steven Stamkos, I believe he played with. I believe he played with guys like even Braden Point throughout his time in Tampa. And then, of course, we know that third line where, you know, you can see the point production go down. But again, he still plays a physical brand and the, the playoff numbers speak for themselves as well. Like, I don't think I need to introduce you guys to how good he is as a playoff guy. The guy has a track, rec uh, track record. He's proven it. He's arguably, and not even close, I, I should say, the best member of that third line that Tampa Bay had. And, you know, again, 33 points. Still not bad considering the fact that he's, like, consistently a 40-point guy, obviously minus a shortened season, and looks like he was dealing with injuries in that. Or, no, that season got shortened, too. I don't know what I'm talking about. 70 games. Uh, but the point is he's going to give you like 40 points and for a bottom six guy, a guy that could slot into the top six, if you need him to, that is a very good piece to have. And he is so versatile beyond that. Like he could play every forward position. Yanni Gord, like if they don't get Alexiak, I could very well live with that. If they find a way to get Yanni Gord, I think this should be above all one of the targets for this team. If it's not during the offseason, Seattle wants to try to contend. It has to be during the deadline if Seattle's out of contention again because this guy would be the perfect fit for this hockey team. I mean, we've talked about it at nauseum on the channel time and time again with this guy. And then you look at what it would look like after the trade. Obviously, the biggest red flag you look at is the 1.9 to spend on a top six right wing spot, which, you know, if you want or better yet, top line right wing, which is another big issue for this hockey team that they need to address. But again, you have flexibility like Jacob Truba. You buy him out all of a sudden. Uh, sorry, my my session expired because I had this open for a while. But uh, like I said, you know, you want to buy him out. You could do that. That ends up opening a lot of cap for you. And then you could plug and play throughout the lineup. Now that I can't move it, unfortunately, I can't show you. But like you could put Lafreniere on that line. Maybe get a guy like Bertuzzi to be on that second line or put a guy like Yanni Gord on the line. Get another 3C like, you know, Teddy Bluger. Barkley Goudreau could get moved to open up caps still, even though he had a good postseason, but maybe you want to explore a little bit of a different option there. You can move a guy, like you have a couple guys, Phil Peedle maybe you can move. I don't know what the value is there, but you can move him. The point being is that you look at that third line and maybe even that gets Phil Peedle going if you want to keep Phil Peedle around, they decide to, you know, put Yanni Gord who could really set up the play and let Heedle drive the play on that line, take pressure off of him and put him on the wing and then get Yanni Gord down the middle, play good defensively, and help Phil Peedle's game even offensively by setting him up. I think the fit is so perfect, especially with Yanni Gord. Alexiak, I could understand a little bit of disagreement there, but I do think that it is an option at the very least that is worth exploring. And again, I could see the argument if you think that I undervalued uh, you know, the package that would take to get both of these guys. I could see you arguing I overvalued. To me, I think that this is pretty fair value on both ends considering Seattle needs more youth. The Rangers need more guys that fit the fit the mold above anything. And I think these two would fit the mold perfectly for this hockey team. But let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Am I crazy? Am I insane? Or is this a rational trade and a rational idea? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. Again, this is all fun discussion. This is not to be taken really seriously. This is just a matter of just, again, throwing things at the wall, seeing if they stick in terms of the fact of what could this team do this offseason? Let me know if you have any other targets, ideas, stuff like that that you want me to discuss and you know dive deep into. Even if I'm not a fan of certain guys, I'll dive into the conversation there and at least explore it. You know, I'm not going to be stubborn with that entirely. But let me know all your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.